Let's spawn our entity inside of the world. More in-depth topics for Minecraft modding available in the 121 modding courses linked below, covering writable and tameable entities, custom entity armor, and even custom entity inventories, among many more awesome topics. All right, we found those back in Telio once more, and in this tutorial, we'll be adding a, basically our entity, spawning inside of the world. And as you will find, it is more straightforward than you might think. Now, to do this, obviously, you will need a custom entity and you will need custom world gen. So do keep that in mind because we will make a custom biome modifier. However, at the towards the end of the tutorial, when we have it basically generated, the JSON file that we need, I'll also show you the JSON file and then you can basically also manually make that if you don't have world gen and or data gen available. Uh, for the mod entity itself, we first of all need to do one thing in the events package in the mod event bus events over here because here we need to register the placement. This is quite important, otherwise your custom mob may also spawn just in the middle of the freaking air and drop to its death, which is usually not something you want. <laughs> so this is going to be a public static void method over here. We're going to call this the register spawn placements. This is the register spawn placements event called event. And of course, as per usual, we add the add subscribe event annotation. Extremely important, otherwise it's not going to work. It also needs to be public, static and void, and it needs to have the register spawn placement events as a parameter. And here we're going to call event.register. We're going to say mod entities.gecko.get. The second parameter is going to be the on underscore ground. In this case, we actually need to say spawn placement types dot on ground. There we go. And then we have a height map type, which is going to be motion blocking no leaves. We then will have a check. I'm going to explain this in a second. This is animal colon colon check animal spawn rules. And then the last one here is going to be the operation of replace. So how does this register method work? Well, obviously, the first parameter is just your custom entity. All right. Then here we're defining where it spawns. You have on ground, in lava, in water, or no restrictions. In our case, I want this to spawn on the ground. Fair enough. The motion blocking no leaves is still something I'm like not 100% sure of. This is the height map types. So I'm pretty sure you could in theory also use both world surface WG or world surface or motion blocking. And then motion blocking no leaves should probably not include any leaves. So that's the idea over here. Uh, so you can see that if there is a certain block state that blocks motion and it should work there basically. The, the general idea here is that you know, you can also try around, you can also play around with this, so that should be fine as well. But one thing is that it is not going to spawn on leaves blocks, which is actually a major thing. The spawn rules here are quite interesting too. If we were to go into them, we can see that it ignores the light requirement because, well, it's an animal, so it doesn't matter. And then also, is it bright enough to spawn though? Because the brightness has to be at least eight, because at night, new animals are actually not spawning. Also, the block below has to be a block that is animal spawnable on. So keep that in mind. If you want to change this, you can simply make another static Boolean method that takes in an animal over here, the level density, the level accessor, the mob spawn type, the block position, and a random source. And you can, in theory, make your own custom predicate for this. So replace would then obviously replace them when you do it on a vanilla entity. The and would then make it so that I believe both of the things need to be true. So if you add things like, you know, the the let's say the animal rules and then you add another rule for a vanilla entity then both of them have to be true and if you choose the or then either of them could be true something like that i think that that would be roughly how it works anyway we then go on to our mod bio modifiers and here it is really freaking simple we want to add another resource key of bio modifier and we're going to call this the spawn underscore gecko and of course the register key here is going to be called spawn underscore gecko two and then in the bootstrap method, it's going to look kind of like this. It's going to be a little bit different than we've, what we've seen before, but that's fine. Context.register, passing in, first of all, the spawn gecko resource key. Then a new biome modifier of type, add spawns biome modifier, very important. Here, we're going to make a holder set dot direct, passing in biomes dot get or throw. Here, we're going to say biomes dot swamp, let's say, and then also biomes get or throw, and let's say, Biomes that planes because those are usually easy. And here we make a list of a new mob setting spawn data, passing in mod entities dot gecko dot get with a weight of twenty, a minimum count of two, and a maximum count of four, and ending it all with a semicolon. As per usual, of course, all of the code is also available to you down below. And you can see the idea here is that we're going to spawn between two and four 
geckos inside of the swamp and the plains biome. So those are the two biomes that those are going to spawn in with a weight of 20. Now, the weight is extremely important. Of course, you could increase the weight and that is going to make your gecko spawn more often. However, it's also going to make every single other entity less likely to spawn. So keep in mind that the weight, you should not put this up too high. Otherwise, you know, no other entity is basically going to spawn, including that of other mods in theory. So yeah, that's why you would want to be a little bit more conservative with the amount of weight that you add over here. But of course, as per usual with all of the numbers, you can always change them, always play around with them, and then you're basically good to go. With that, let's run the data gen over here, and we can then basically take a look at the generated JSON file as well. It's going to be under data, tutorial mode, Neoforge, biomodifiers, spawn underscore gecko JSON, and you can see it is super freaking simple, right? Like the actual JSON file itself, super simple. This should be, I mean, basically all of this should be very self-explanatory, and in theory, then, if you don't have world gen and or data gen, you can, of course, also make this manually. And there we go. But with that done, let's jump into the game and see if they spawn. All right, fans, it's back in Minecraft. And I'm pretty sure over here there is actually a normal plains biome. And this is indeed a plains biome. And now the big question is just, are they going to spawn? Now, sometimes, of course, this might take a little bit of time. And, you know, obviously, there's other animals that are spawning here as well. And it might also change the biome. So we're just going to cut to when I find them. And there we have them. Let's freaking go. So you can see all different variants over here, obviously. And they spawn here in the plains biome. Absolutely fantastic. And that is custom entities spawning inside of the world. Absolutely freaking fantastic, man. And that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll add custom mob sounds. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.